right, everybody. I think I'm going to go ahead and get started here. Thank you, everybody, so much for joining us um, on our first Monogram Table Talks in June. Um, if you have been to our talks before, thanks for sticking with us. And if you're new, welcome. We're so happy to have you. If you can see me in the uh, bottom corner here, my name is Corwin Thompson, and I am the lead marketing specialist here at Monogram. And I'm gonna kick off our meeting with some brand information, and then I'll go over sort of how to use um, Microsoft Teams as we understand that this is a new meeting platform for many people. After that, I'll turn it over to Chef John, who will train us on dishwashers today from his beautiful home in Michigan. Many of you know that Monogram is the top of the line, most elevated product from GE. What you may not know is the rich heritage of appliance manufacturing and the innovations that have come out of GE for over 100 years. That being said, I wanted to show you all this amazing graphic which shows all of the appliance innovations that have come from GE since 1902. There are 55 innovations listed here, 22 of which are monogram first. You can see some highlights in bold. For example, 1987 was the first complete line of premium built appliances for custom kitchens. In 1999, GE created Advantium Speed Cooking, which is the technology used in our five-in-one ovens. And in 2016, we were the first Wi-Fi integrated appliances that now have become almost commonplace in the industry. And not just Monogram, but the GE Appliances House of Brands carries a legacy of durability and craftsmanship that you can see right here. And to summarize, this is our House of Brands, and these are kind of what each one has to offer. Monogram, as many of you may know, is our luxury line focused on premium materials, performance, and ownership. Our cafe line is all about making appliances personal. They're distinct by design, giving you the ability to interchange handles and knobs with different finishes to match your aesthetics. GE and GE Profile are the lines with the GE namesake where we started our innovation over 100 years ago. Hire is born for the city. Higher appliances bring the energy of the cities into your kitchen, big or small, you can choose your size and explore our appliance suites. And last but not least, hot point, our entry level appliances, which are used in a lot of apartment buildings and house flips. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and end my slideshow portion here and bring you all up. I'm going to still be sharing my screen here um, but I want to go ahead and sh give you guys a little tutorial on how to utilize Teams if you're not familiar with it. What I'm also going to do is share a little tutorial in the chat. So you guys can see my mouse here, right? Um, so I'm. this is the chat here. I'm going to post a little um, infographic in the chart so you can kind of see which buttons to use um, just in case somebody misses my tutorial here. Um, but here is your in this toolbar here. You're going to see the camera. Please feel free to turn your camera on if you'd like to join us on video. Um, and here is your the microphone button. So we have everybody muted currently just because if you're unmuted and you're not speaking, there can be some background noise. But if you have any questions or comments, we'd love for you to participate in the session so you can unmute yourself if you do have a question. What you can also do is raise your hand. So by clicking the raise hand button on the participants list, we can actually see that you've raised your hand and that you have a question. So we'll get to you if you raise your hand and then in the chat box here, please ask away any questions or comments and we will answer any questions that you may have. Um, so please speak up if you have any questions or comments about how to use Teams um, and we will answer those for you and I will kick it off to Chef John now. Thank you so much, Corwin, for that introduction. Well, you guys, here we are again with another Monogram Table Talk. I'm happy to have you in my home kitchen again today. You know, we always have, uh, we're always being flexible at Monogram and with our trainings and, and coming up with something new for you today, and today is no different. 
Um, I have a beautiful monogram dishwasher here in my home, um, but as a owner of the monogram dish system, but more, even more than that, somebody that has four of them at work who runs two, three, sometimes four cycles a day on those dishwashers. I'm hoping today that I can give you a good insight and feedback from a chef standpoint, owner's standpoint, and just a little different look and insight into what the dishwasher is all about. Um, like we said, today's format will be just a little bit different. Um, I wanna share some slides with you guys today. I wanna share a quick video um, because there is so much engineered into these dishwashers that I simply can't just show you from the facade or the inside uh, alone. Also throughout the, the training, I know that um, we're gonna put some different links in that chat box as well. Um, those links will be the slides that we're talking about. I'll share my screen with you uh, for some of them. Um, some of the other parts of the training, I'm gonna have my dishwasher open and we'll be talking about it. But so you can have an even more in-depth look, I'll point out different slides like, hey, click on uh, slide five and you'll be able to take a look at exactly what I'm talking about even clearer in an even clearer picture. So with all that, I'll reiterate again what Corwin said. Guys, I want questions. You know, washing the dishes is a dirty job. I want to show you that Monogram gets that job done and we get it done in a very, very productive way, whether it be quick, whether it be high temp, um, all sorts of different ways we address getting your dishes clean because we all eat differently, food gets stuck to the dishes differently, sometimes we pre-clean, sometimes we don't, and we need to address all of those, as well as different plate sizes, uh, fork sizes, you name it, we're gonna talk about it today. So if you have specific questions, ask them, let me have them, I want you to, it makes it fun, so ask away. Now, from what I, what I know, Monogram and more, uh, and even bigger, GE has made dishwashers for some time now could even be 90 years plus. We've been making these dishwashers. And it's safe to say back then, when we first created the dish system, that it was cutting edge, that it had industry first, that it was innovative. These are some big words that are still very important today in the monogram line. And I think when we start to show you the monogram line of dishwashers, I think that you'll see, and I think that our engineers back then would be very proud of the system that you're gonna see today, because it too has industries for industry first, cutting edge, and probably, and, and more than likely, the best dishwasher you'll find on the line out there. So now what I'm gonna do is take my computer on a little walk, but before I do, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you guys because I wanna elaborate just a little bit more on, um, on those pillars that Corwin was talking about. Corwin, can you guys see that okay? Yep, looking good. Cool, look at me. Even a chef can, can get this stuff down after a few months, I love it. Don't ask me to cut a vegetable right now, but I've got the, <laughs> the screen sharing down, love it. All right, guys, so these are those three pillars that uh, Corwin was mentioning earlier. Um, and, and we focus on these at Monogram and our dishwasher line um, more than shows all of them off. When we talk about materials, I'm gonna show you guys the handles and the accent to some of our handles, the materials that we use, be it brass or extruded aluminum. We're gonna talk about a stainless interior. You're gonna see that that stainless interior is beautifully illuminated by LED lighting. When we get to performance, we perform better than anyone and we add more to our dishwasher when we're doing it. So we have a DBA that's as low as 39 on our, on our line. We also have full extension third racks that are standard. We have a Piranha hard, uh, our hard food disposer, 90 plus jets and seven separate wash cycles. I could go on, but you know, obviously just from that performance is packed into our dish systems. Lastly is ownership. Ownership is very, very important. And in the dish system, it's, it's, none, it's, it's the same standard as the rest of the line. We have that limited two-year entire appliance warranty uh, and then a limited five-year warranty on there. And then during your ownership, we make the, the, the ownership of a dishwasher a little more sweeter because you never really know what's going on inside your dish system. You just assume it'll beep at you or the light will go on when it's done. So with our smart HQ app, during ownership, you get to connect with your appliance. You can look at a bunch of different things that I'll go over later from timing and pods, but it's just a cool way to know exactly what's happening 
in your dish system. So now, on to the next slide here, guys. I'm gonna introduce to you kind of the, the sizes and, and some of the offerings, but also on this really useful slide, is the differences between our offerings. So the first two stainless steel units are both 24 inch units. One is shown with a statement handle, one is shown with a minimalist handle. And then that third dishwasher with a custom panel on it is our 18 inch platform. Now guys, all of these, all of these dishwashers are panel ready or they can come with stainless panels. When you order them panel ready or with stainless panels, be certain that you order, order the handle kit if you're going to use the statement or the minimalist handle. So you have to always order that handle kit when you order the dishwasher, whether it's panel ready or stainless. You can see some of the, the differences between the 925 unit and the 985 unit. There's not a whole lot of differences. Important to note that that 925 unit is the one that's available with our um, standard rebate package. So that's included in the rebate package. The 985 is the upgrade. So when you upgrade, you still get full credit for that other system. You just pay the difference. Um, but the differences in performance, like I said, not great which is good to know for your customers. Um, but what they are is the standard offering comes in at about 42 B, uh, DBA, where the upgrade comes in at nine, uh, 39 DBA. Um, it, it's not that big of a difference, but when we're talking to our premium luxury customers and they really want the quietest, by far, get them that 39 DBA. Um, the noise difference is very, very subtle. I mean, and you're talking in a, a, a empty room, completely void of any other sound, but we give you that option, that reassurance that you're gonna get the perfectly quiet dishwasher that you, you deserve. So 39 DB, dBA versus 42. The other slight difference is in that third extension rack system. And that racking system on the, re, uh, the, the first 925 level, that racking system has a, a full extending ball bearing rack, but it's not a smooth glide ball bearing rack. And that same third extension rack that holds your silverware on the 925 is a single construction. So the whole thing would have to come out where on the 985, you get a smooth glide third rack and you get two separate compartments where you can take them out and take them to the silverware drawer or the utensil drawer. Um, so that's really the, the main differences in there. When we look at the 18 inch, it has a little less features. Um, you know, it's a tighter spot, so we can't, you know, quite pack in all of the features that 18 inch, but I use this one quite often too in the showroom and it does a fantastic job. One of the biggest benefits though of that 18 inch uh, 165 unit there is that it is the only one in the lineup that is ADA compliant. So when we're looking at cus customers with specific needs, um, this one definitely fits the bill. We're very proud to have that in our lineup as well. Um, now that's a little bit about what we have to offer. A lot of those other things that are listed there, we're gonna go into depth more later. Now I wanted to show you just a little bit about the handle offering so you can get a clear view on that. Um, this is our statement collection. You can see statement collection. It has, has you know, edge to edge design. It has um, that kind of tubular handle, but that brass accent piece, guys, just really brings out the design of a kitchen. And that accent piece, we didn't say, you know, just put some nail polish or some kind of paint on there. That's an actual brass accent. It's timeless. It's not going to go anywhere. The next handle you could order is our minimalist handle. You can see it's an aluminum handle. We don't use aluminum because it's cheaper. We use aluminum because it's tougher and is truly minimalist. When we extrude most of this handle out of a single um, piece of aluminum, we push it through basically a mold. So when it comes out, there's less edges, there's less welding, it's more minimal, it's more seamless. So we love this minimalist handle. Now guys, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my screen share. All right, we'll get this camera adjusted here and I kind of sat down with y'all, so 
normally as a chef, you're not supposed to sit on the job. It's really frowned upon, but we won't tell anybody today. All right, so we're here in front of my uh, my dishwasher here. And this, you know, Alex keeps telling me they'll probably send me a brand new one. The interior of this is exactly the same, basically. Um, I have the, the pro handle on here. So that's really the only difference that we're gonna talk about today. But when we open this bad boy up, first thing we see come on is that LED lighting. And guys, when I'm talking about this, and Corbin, do we have the, the slides in the chat now? Uh, yes, Anthony has shared um, shared the presentation in the chat. Very um, good. I also actually, while uh, I have the floor for just a second, um, when I was doing my introduction, I forgot to tell everybody how to pin you. Oh no! Which is okay. important. Um, so if everybody can see sh um, John Liddell's video, you'll see his name um, with three little dots next to them. Um, and if you click those three dots and you click pin, Chef John's screen will become the full screen, so you won't have to see anybody else's face on the large screen. You can see his dishwasher in full view, um, and the instructions are in the chat for you, but I just wanted to um, bring that up really quick. <laughs> Thank you so much. So guys, while I'm talking about the next couple of sections, if um, while I'm pulling out different racks and pointing out things, if you wanna get a clearer view too, you can look at slides five and six um, on this next section, and it'll give you a great view uh, of some of the topics that I'm, I'm, I'm gonna show you. Um, so to begin with guys, we've got this bottom rack here, it's really easy glide system never falls off. I don't have any trouble with this where I know from all of the all of the dishwashers, be them commercial or residential, sometimes that action isn't so true and perfect. Nice thing is though, if I have um, a big load of something in here, a bunch of spoons or, you know, being, being a hunter or fisherman, you never know what I'm washing in here. I might need to take it back out to, to the garage to where I store those things. I can lift that rack right out. This rack has so much versatility to it though, because what we can do is it has adjustable tines. Not all plates are shaped the same, right? So you might be square, you might be round. My wife buys ones with like little, you know, like little bubble ridges on it. So the idea that we can, by the, with one finger, with pressure, pull towards me and adjust these tines so that they are 100% upright, maybe to hold square plates, or really skewed out so they hold that larger plate. I find without that, plates want to tip forward or backwards and they do not get perfectly clean. Another great thing about this, and I'll show you, I do have a plate there, so give you a little bit of scale, um, how that can sit and really can sit almost either way the same. But now it's, you know, shrimp boil season, crawfish season, Wherever you're from, there's something we're boiling up. And we want to lay those tines down. Why? Special cookware. Different things, big pots like this. Now we don't have to worry about bending those tines to jam this pot in here. I'm a chef. We, we try to clean as easy as possible. I will jam a pot into somewhere that doesn't fit. But in monogram, those tines fold down. And I just drop it down very easy. It's great for these big pots like this but also great for those casserole roll dishes. You ever have them where they kind of sit on an angle in, in your dishwasher and you go, well, nothing got down here. The jets didn't get down here or up there. Why is that corner not clean? It wasn't sitting flat. Let it sit flat. It's a great way to clean your casserole dishes. On this bottom rack as well, guys, we've got some fixed tines in the, in the front here, square plates, small bread and butter plates, coffee cups, all of that fun stuff can go right in there. And then as we move over, we look at the silverware basket. And some people, folks say, well, John, you just told me, you know, all your models come with that third rack in there and you're still giving me a, a silverware basket. Is that because the third rack, which holds the silverware doesn't work? No, it's for flexibility. It's just like these tines. We put this in here, not because we think and we don't think all plates are created equal and how we use things are not always the same. So some days you might be happy with your third rack at the top, but there's some times where you have a big dinner party, you have larger spatulas and different things that might not fit up top where you can flip that open and 
label or put them in here. And then we don't just say we'll use the normal cleaning process. What we have are 40 spray jets through the bottom here. So if I lift this up, you guys can see there's an actual spray in there. Can you see that? Yeah, I think so. I hope so. Um, there's an actual port that these silverware baskets sit down on. So when it locks in, now you're blasting from the top. There's always that discussion. Are you a tines up or tines down type of person, right? And we don't like to tell folks what to do, but we have found that the best way to get these guys clean is to put them in up like this. If you're not that type of person, we don't wanna change your life or your habits. So just open that basket, whoops, and drop it right down. That's okay too. So I utilize this in a lot of different ways. Um, you know, we have people at the house. We don't have people at the house, just my wife and I. I don't need so much silverware space here. This has compartments. So this guy comes off, three compartment. So a lot of times I'm just using these, one for my silverware and one for my, uh, my tongs and my spatulas and whatnot. So it gives me again, more flexibility. Hey, if you love the third rack and you go, John, I am getting the minimalist handle. I'm minimalist everything. Please don't send me any extra moving parts. That's not necessary. That's okay. Because what I do actually is utilize these bottom 40 jets, almost like blasters. So again, you take that casser casserole dish like this, all baked on eggplant parm, all of those different cheeses, and you lay it nice and flat over those blasters, and now you get an extra spray on it. So it's using the dishwasher, dishwasher's flexibility to kind of handle my cleaning needs. All right, so we also have the stainless steel interior that you guys can see. It's stainless wrap all, all around the tub. It just shows not only are your dishes clean, but your tub is clean as well. Next, we're gonna go up to the top rack here. Or actually, let's stay down low. We'll move this guy out of the way. Perfect. I wanna show you down in here in the interior as well. We've got a removable filter. Guys, this is again, a dirty topic, but some people don't even know that they have filters in their dishwashers. And these are the same folks that might be the, the cleanest people in the world, and they just don't know. Food will get stuck down in there. You need to clean this. It's got like this cool little micro filter in there. I spend, um, at home, I probably clean this once or twice a week just because you kind of get a little crazy about it once you know you can clean it. But it cleans out very easy, and there's very little food particle stuck in there. I just spray it out with my, my uh, kitchen sink hose there, locks right down into place. We're gonna talk more about what's underneath there in a, in a bit, um, but the next thing I'm gonna show you is up here, easy smooth glide second rack system. This one is one of my favorites. It's got a lot of little gadgets built into it that keep my dishes from breaking, that keep my dishes um, from coming out uh, dirty instead of clean. So we've got these little arms that fold down and they have little wine rack or wine stem holders in there. So I can hold a bunch of stems of wine and wash them perfectly without them tipping over and breaking. If you have those long stem wine glasses, go ahead and use the push button here and lower your rack down even further to give you more height on the top or vice versa. Maybe your, your boil pot is even bigger. You can give your bottom section uh, even further capacity down the line there. So now flip those up and we want to look at some, one of the, uh, it's an industry first at actually the bottle jets in our dishwasher. Right here we have one, two, three, four bottle jets. So those four bottle jets, then we have 40 jets down on the dish or the silverware cleaner. So with that and everything else in this system, side jets, um, the sprayers on the bottom, this arm here, we have a total of 90 jets and 90 jets all doing something different, okay? In this case, we're gonna use them as bottle washers. So you know what bottle washer used to mean? It used to mean one of these guys, right? Where you, you scrub out the bottle and you get all the protein out of the bottom, or if you did cucumber lemon water or made fresh lemon lemonade, sticks the, the lemon sticks to all the glasses and you scrub it out with this. My wife is a glass collector. Anything that looks pretty in his glass, she wants. 
So we have a lot of bottles like this. We got like old beer bottles she finds who knows where like that. And both of these can slide right over those bottle jets. So now when we're cleaning them, we're forcing the water from the inside and really powerfully cleaning them, perfectly clean from the outside, inside while the other arms do the work from the outside. So protein bottles here, we, she uses these guys too. Those go right on there. And if there's not enough room, we just drop that down. Also, that coffee cup that you find like two weeks later in the garage, you know, and it's all kind of dehydrated out. And you might as well just, you know, scrape the grinds out of it. You could probably make a fresh cup. Um, you put that on those bottle jets or that wine cup on there, it's going to blast everything out of there for you. So that's going to work very, very well in your, in your favor. All right. Now I'm going to skip over a couple other things on the washing side because we're going to cover that more in depth later. Um, but that's kind of the inner workings, you know, with those 90 jets all placed all over the all over the unit. Um, how we use those and is is kind of cool too because we give you seven different um, dedicated wash cycles basically, and you can see that on slide seven is our control panel and how that that zones out. Um, Got a great LED screen, LED lit screen here that allows us to scroll through all of those different seven wash zones. And when we talk about the seven wash zones, it's important to know that we can make uh, adjustments to really any of those, those or not wash zones, wash cycles. Those seven wash cycles, we can make adjustments to any of them based on what we're putting in. So we start with like a rinse cycle. On a rinse cycle, we can rinse at about 15 minutes. Why would you want a rinse cycle? Well, maybe you're doing a lot of cooking in the kitchen and you just have a, a bowl that, you know, you maybe you whip some uh, egg or some cream in. You want to throw that in and just rinse, rinse it out. Not a whole lot of, of baked on anything on there. 15 minutes, it's not going to dry it. There's no dry in that. We can also do like an express cycle, which is about 30 minutes. And at 30 minutes, again, the express cycle is really just quickly washing maybe some glasses that were just water glasses from the table. And they're not going to have a really hard dry on that as well. Those are just quick cycles. When we get into auto sense, heavy, normal, uh, light, those washing cycles, that's where we start adding different types of drying, different types of heating. Um, and that's where we can actually start to, excuse me one second, that's where we can actually start to customize. So when we run a, let's say normal cycle, it's an hour and 18 minutes. Then I have the option of adding a pre-soak to that. And I'm gonna show you a cool thing uh, on pre-soak later, but with pre-soak, we actually use water, we use steam as well in there to pre-soak our dishes. So that's gonna add time. Was it that baked on casserole? You wanna use that. Then we can also um, all the way up to sanitize. So whether it's baby bottles or we're just being extra careful with all of our stuff these days, we can sanitize them. Then when it comes to drying, we have normal and then we have like power and max dry. So when we go to power dry, what happens is we, we are really extending the, the length of the drying cycle. And when we extend it, of course, the time goes way up. But because of the drying um, technology we use, when you go, go to our highest drying cycle time, you're going to get perfectly dried glasses, Tupperwares, plastics, guaranteed. And I'll show you a cool video on that in just a, in just a bit as well. Now, the other thing we get to do is wash by zone. Now, I know we've all heard of drawer dishwashers where the, the top is its own system and the bottom is its own system. Um, but you can kind of outgrow that quickly. And if you have a pan that's too deep, it definitely doesn't fit in there. And uh, not, nothing wrong with those systems whatsoever. But we kind of wanted to give you that idea within this unit. So we give you the availability, small family like mine, where I can just wash the top rack or I can just wash the bottom rack. So that's one of our cleaning cycles. So now when you're you know, cleaning as you cook, I know some of us do, I know some of us don't. You could actually just run a short load of dishes on the top while you finish up dinner. After you eat dinner, you unload and you have a full fresh cavity to, to run a full cycle of dishes. So again, guys, flexibility 
in your dishwasher because your home is ever changing. All right. Chef John. Yes. Just one comment to add to that. So you mentioned the breakable compartments for the silverware. Sometimes I take one of those compartments and put it on the top rack when I'm using the top wash zone. So you can put that silverware in there, especially if I have smaller items and have to remove that third rack. Yep, exactly. Oh, that's cool. I've, yeah, I've actually never done that. I've always saved my silverware until I was running the full the full load at home. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so it almost, you know, with that, Alex, it, it does make it, you know, with one rack, you can do everything you need to for a day's worth of dishes in a lot of families. Perfect. Yeah, exactly. Me here. All right, guys. So we're going to go on to the actual washing of the dishes and how that performance works. Um, I hope you all are utilizing those little um, those little pictures in the in the chat window. And for this part of it, if you peek at slides eight and nine, um, it'll really kind of give you an in-depth look at what we're talking about. So we've all had nasty dishes. We've had things burnt on. We've had things baked on. We've had avocado that never comes off the spoon. I know Joe is guilty of running the dishwasher with the same cup or fork in it 10 times just to see if that piece of rice is going to magically come off, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know it. I'm guilty too. Well, you know, since I've owned Monogram, since I've worked with Monogram, it rarely ever happens that we have to do that. And that is because of our washing system. And you guys will see in those slides that we have a deep steam assisted pre-soak. That is for the lazy cleaner. That is for the person that doesn't have time to clean. That is for just the general person that doesn't care to understand how things clean. They just want them to be there be there and be perfect. So steam assisted cleaning is huge in my life. I would rather run something on a longer cycle steam assisted than try to cut the job down and wash it by hand. Now those 90 plus jets oh, after that steam assist pre-soak goes, uh, they get the job done. I've pointed out some of them, a bunch of them on the arms on the bottom, um, the blaster jets here for the silverware, the top arm, silverware blaster up there for your third rack. They're all putting out work. And then during the preheat or the pre-soak cycle, they're also soaking the dishes as it, as it fills. So we're almost pre-cleaning while we fill. It's an amazing system. The, um, one of the first images that you're gonna see in there is the actual controlled chaos um, our engineers created within the tub to start that dishwashing process. That's why I wanted to make sure that slide was in there because there's no way to, to, to see it unless you can actually see that water spraying in every single direction. And when I say every single direction, I honestly mean it um, because these, these arms, this bottom arm especially, has reverse direction on it. And when you see it in that image, you see the jets are pointed out at different angles. And if you've ever ran a power washer or a garden hose and you're trying to get something sticky off the sidewalk, um, maybe it's gum, you hit it from one angle, you can get it halfway off. Well, it's best to turn around and come from the other angle too. And it comes off and lifts off a lot easier. A lot is true with that um, food stuck on the plate too. If you just spin the arm in one direction, you only address the food from one side, one degree or angle. When we turn that blade around then we start blasting it from different ways it's the most effective way to wash the dishes so of course we put that in there now the 40 um i talked about the 40 plus uh, pressure jets in the bottom and then the industry first uh, bottle jets on top next what i want to show you guys or talk about is below the removable filter here, guys, is another thing that Monogram does perfect where other folks in the industry are going to either leave out the filter, they're going to leave out the piranha hard food disposal. Why? Can't They can't figure out how to make it quiet enough. They can't figure out how to do dry assisted, put all of these mechanics in there with, and still get the DBA that Monogram achieves. Now, this piranha hard food disposer is no joke. It's, a, it's going around at about 3,600 revolutions per minute. And um, when it does that, it, it does pulverize basically little pieces of toothpick, chicken bone, food particle, and get them right out of the system. So even if something makes it past this guy, we've got an answer for you, and it's not gonna harm your dish system. Now, again, when those run, 
remember, when you're looking at other, other brands out there, we've got a lot of mechanics uh, or motors and mechanics pumped into this thing that make noise. We still achieve 39 dBA. It's very important to remember. Lastly, we want things to perform, but we don't want any of our customers to be in a bad spot with their dishwasher when there's a leak. We don't want them to have an ownership experience where their dishwasher ruined their floors. So we have leak detection sensors in here that will actually shut your dishwasher down should there be a leak detected during the wash cycle. So any of the ownership has nothing to worry about. We're gonna watch, uh, watch out for you. All right, so let me go. One second here, guys. John, you're frozen. I wasn't sure if it was just me. I wonder if he should exit Teams and try and log back in. Yeah, I had to do that this morning. Yeah, do you want, John, do you want to try to exit? Oh, there you're back. You were frozen you're for a minute. We see you now. Hold on. You guys got me back? We, yeah, we can see you. You're back. Okay. Sorry. Um, not exactly. Something crashed the screen there. All right. No big deal. I'm back. Disaster averted. That's all that matters. <laughs> So let's try this one more time. All right. No problem. Hey, listen, I have burnt bacon in front of people. I have burnt the toast. I've, I've dropped steaks on the ground. I was cooking for someone. This is no big deal. It happens. All right. You guys see that screen now? Yes. Very good. All right, so we just talked about the, the, the washing of the dishes um, and how effectively we do that. It's, it's only one step in the process though. We need to dry effectively, right? And I understand there are tons of different ways that companies try to achieve drying. And I know during drying cycles, things can be loud and they can be long and the end result is poor results. Your plastics aren't dry, your Tupperwares, even your wine glasses may not be dry, especially if they have a little divot in the top of them that could hold water. Well, at Monogram, um, we do it exactly right. And looking at all of these slides, I think you guys will see, it's easy to see that our engineers are truly geniuses. And I'm thankful to have them to help me explain, or um, have these slides to help me explain their amazing approach um, at getting dishes dry. So first of all, you're gonna see that seven CFM fan under the pull tab, the, the tub pulls. Um, it, it pulls fresh air in and through the 400 watt heating element. So that's just the fan size that we're using. Then from there, after we pull the air, the, the dry heated air channels up the side and vents into the tub directly. Then we're not done with our, our fan. We have another fan assist that helps to pull that hot, hot air and to blow that hot air as well. Um, the next slide here, not the one we want to see. I want to show you exactly how that works. There's no sound to this video, so we'll just watch the, uh, the imagery here, but you can see that motor pulling the air right through the side into the tub itself. 
Hey, John, I'm sorry. We are on the uh, app slide right now. That's what we can see. So maybe we need to go oh, back. Yeah. <laughs> I know sometimes the videos don't want to pop up. I really want to show it though, because it's such a great video. I know. I could always try to. No, I think I'm good. Okay. Let's try one more time. All righty. Okay, this looks promising. I like that. All right. We're good. So the air traveling up the side of the unit directly through that that port there where it's dispersed and then we have another fan towards the top that pulls the air through removes moisture basically with cold air and then it's vented out it's a truly unique system i i and it does an absolute like i said an absolute fabulous job All right, we're back. So guys, I think when you see some of that imagery there, I hope it makes a lot more sense on, on what and how we're accomplishing that. Um, I think there's one other um, aspect to drying that we need to talk about and that, that is, it's that fan assisted where it's really blowing water off the tops of our glasses. It's really uh, pla plastics and Tupperware are very difficult to heat up enough to get the water to burn off. Um, so that fan is how we achieve that. It's again, just one of the most important features when we get our, our dishes dried. Um, now we're gonna talk just a little bit about that um, ownership. Again, I think it's that Smart HQ app. I think that it's the, the idea of being able to monitor the time left on your dishes. Uh, monitor how many pods are left, how many pods you have left in your system, and what cycle you're running um, becomes very, very important. Other than that, guys, I think I covered most everything with the monogram dish line. Um, if I hope you have any questions, you ask them. I don't know if there's anything in the chat box or anything like that, or if anybody has anything they'd like to add. I don't see anything in the chat box, um, but I do know Alex Oxner is on the line and I didn't know if there's anything additional that he'd want to add. He is our training, our product training manager pro. Um, so I don't know if there's anything that John missed, Alex, that you would add. Don't mean to put you on the spot, but thought maybe you'd, if there's anything to add. Hey, everybody. Uh, I just want to say that Chef John teaching dishwashers, that is above and beyond, man. You did a great job. Um, no, so uh, so I think I think he touched on a, a lot of the big points, um, and I do see I do see a, a question that just came in. Um, and here, here you go. Look, I even got my monogram hat on for you. <laughs> um, so Rita asked, "Do you need to pre-rinse the dishes?" Um, and this goes back to our steam uh, pre-wash or our uh, steam pre-soak function. Um, we actually discourage pre-rinsing the dishes for for a couple reasons. Um, one, it actually uses a lot more water pre-rinsing dishes. So uh, you know, believe it or not, people most of the time when they're pre-rinsing. They'll, uh, they'll just kind of leave that faucet running and on average they'll waste about 25 to 30 gallons of water. Well, a normal cycle on these monogram dishwashers. Now, when you start adding features, it, it bumps it up, you know, just a little bit, but a normal cycle is only three and a half gallons on these monogram dishwashers. So it's much more water efficient to just scrape your plate, put it in there. Um, I always, I always leave my pre steam function on because to Alex's point, I always have oatmeal that has turned into concrete uh, in my dishwasher. So I just leave the steam function on to help loosen up those food particles. Um, so uh, so no, I, I, we don't recommend actually pre-rinsing uh, for that reason. And also because the way that detergents formulated nowadays, it actually needs something to go after. So believe it or not, there's actually such thing as putting your dishes in your dishwasher too clean. 
Um, so what you want, again, just to kind of scrape the plate and detergent, the way that it's formulated, it needs those food particles. I always think of Pac-Man, like it needs those food particles to, to attack. Otherwise, it could potentially attack your dishes or you can get some etching uh, in your glassware. And that's actually because of the detergent. So um, so like I, I always tell people, just scrape your plates, put it in there, use the pre-steam function if you got some dried on uh, stuff in there, but then just let the dishwasher do what it's meant to do. But other than that, I think, I think John, you did a great job. <laughs> Alex, of course, there's one more quick question. Can you use regular detergent or have to use the pods? Um, you, you can use regular detergent. Um, what I will say is, you know, all these detergent companies, uh, they've actually invested more research into the pods. Um, so I think a lot of the way that dishwashers are designed and really the way that detergent is designed, um, probably the best cleaning stuff are, the, are those pods um, because that's just kind of the way everything's going. So what, what we see is about 80% of people use pods and dishwashers uh, versus you know the 20% using, using liquid or, or powder. Um, but absolutely, if you, if you prefer you know, a liquid or a powder over a pod, um, you, can, you can totally do that. Um, but yeah, what, it's just what we see is, you know, when you look at our dispenser, it's a nice little place for a pod to go. Um, whereas on the flip side, like if you think about laundry, it's kind of 2080, only about 20% of people use pods and laundry and about 80% of folks still tick, stick to the laundry detergent. But, um, but yeah, we see, we see a lot more people using pods, but, uh, but again, there's no, there's no recommendation to not use uh, liquid or powder detergent. That's a great question. Um, and of course, that created one more question. How important is it to use the rinse agent? Um, yeah, so I think I think just about every manufacturer recommends some type of rinse agent. Um, we're, we're no exception. Uh, really, I think what you see there is it helps with the drying performance. It helps, you know, make sure you don't have those water spots and stuff at the end of the cycle. Um, you know, like We've got this really great updated drying system called Max Dry um, that um, that does a, a really great job. And, and again, you know, plastic is really what's tough to, to get dry and where you see a lot of residual moisture. Um, but um, it, it is I will say it is a recommendation, um, you know, using some kind of finish or jet dry, some, something like that, uh, just to kind of take it take it over the top uh, as far as drying and, and getting rid of those spots. Let's see. Okay, that's great. Um, and then there is just one more quick question again. Do you recommend leaving the door closed after the cycle to complete the drying process? Um, yes. Yeah, so, so for ours, I would say so. Um, you know, we we've got that max dry system. If you choose to engage that one, um, you know, part of that is um, the added time that that we uh, we incorporate into the cycle. So, you know, for us, we've got um, essentially a combination of like a condensate dry with two fans assisting, and now we're we're introducing heated air into the dishwasher. Um, so for ours, I say leave the door shut until the entire cycle, including drying, is done, um, because we actually do have a heating element and we have a fan uh, that helps uh, pull that pull that warm uh, humid air out. Now you've got some other manufacturers that probably do recommend opening up the door because uh, they may not have a fan system or they may not have a heating element to help with drying. Um, I know there's one or two out there that even have a an auto door open uh, uh, option where that door cracks open. But but for ours, um, you know, our drying system is intended to uh, to complete the drying process with with the door closed, because um, if you open it, that'll actually stop the cycle. It's a great question. Great. Thank you so much, Alex, for all that for all that insight um and then there's of course another question that comes up as i'm talking are there plans to release the 18 inch or the stainless steel option so i can go ahead and answer that the 18 inch does have a stainless steel option today and we are in the process of updating our 18 inch as well so other than that i think that's all the questions thanks so much alex O, for jumping in quickly and giving insight and your tips um and then i'm gonna pass it back to corwin all right thanks guys
Thanks so much, Alex and John. That was so wonderful. Um, I just want to let everybody know that we do have our table talks going on for the rest of the month of June. Um, you can contact any of us for the calendar should you need or email the email address that you email to register for this one, mdcchai at geappliances.com. Tomorrow we have architect Richard Fleming on, and then on Thursday we are having culinary conversations with our five in one um, Advantium oven. So we really hope to see you all there. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks again, John. You're Enjoy welcome. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.